Welcome to the Holy Smokes podcast. We are in the backyard of Brett and Aaron Kunkel at the Orange County chapter Orange of Holy County, Smokes. California. Orange County, California. There is an Orange County, Florida. Oh, yeah. That's true. We just and, want to make and sure. Then there's an Orange County, New York, where the choppers are made. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Orange County choppers. <laughs> or maybe that's Jersey where they're at. I don't remember. We're the first Orange County Holy Smokes cohort. Right. Exactly. We have to suffer through harsh weather and it's hard to smoke a cigar outside. Yeah, it's kind of cold right now. It's probably in the like high 60s. Yeah. A little nippy <laughs> for Southern California. That's right. So we are in Aaron and Brett's backyard and we are joined by Sean Hatfield. And uh, the reason that we're doing these chapter features is to cast the vision for the listeners that are in areas that there is not an active Holy Smokes group. And so, Brett, how did this group get going? Yeah, well, guys, you start showing up in my backyard smoking cigars. And <laughs> so I have a buddy who invited me to a cigar festival in Colorado one year. It's like, you got to come to this. You got to meet this group of guys that I hang out with and smoke cigars with. And so I ended up going to the Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival and met all these great guys and met Kay Hiramini and... So we got talking a little bit, and I said, hey, Kay, is there a group in Southern California that I, you know, I live in Southern California. Is there a group there that I can connect with? I'd love to hang out with guys. And he said, nope, there's not a group. Start one. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, all right. So I was intent on getting a, a chapter in Southern California going. And I think it was actually before I met Sean, I think it was the summer of 2012, when I met Kay, and so then that fall, just every once in a while, would kind of throw out an email to guys I knew who had cigars and said, let's get together and have a cigar. Nothing regular, but just kind of sporadically. And then Sean and I met in the winter of 2012, Mm -hmm. and I always vet potential friends with a question. And the question is, do you smoke cigars? If the answer is yes, we can be friends. If the answer is no, we can only be acquaintances, okay? <laughs> Sean thankfully said yes. I was like, okay, I, I, I can hang with this guy. And so we would just, I'm trying, I think what we started doing was kind of the girls had a night off. Right. Right? We kind of gave them like Wednesday night off. Yeah. Well, and, the, and then Wednesdays were youth group nights typically right. for, for the kids. So that was easy for yeah. us to gather. And Yeah. Kids would go to youth group. We'd say moms go you know, do whatever you want, uh, hang out with your friends, you know, take care of family business, whatever. You got the night off. Yeah. And then we've got our younger kids are all the same age. So we got little boys and then girls. And so the kids would hang out and play. Right. And Sean and I would sit out in the patio and smoke cigars. And this is kind of at the same time as we do, you know, periodic holy smokes things. And so we would just make made this regular Wednesday night thing. And then we just started saying, all right, let's open this up to the group and start inviting guys in. And we'd start gathering Wednesday nights. And for, uh, you know, it's been off and on kind of our regularity, but we started, we were in the habit of doing it every Wednesday, pretty much every Wednesday. I travel a lot for work. So, you know, those, obviously we wouldn't do it on those Wednesdays. Invited other guys in and really with kind of no expectations except bring your own cigars. Uh, that was pretty much the only expectation to come. We start at 7, I think, is when we would kind of make the starting time. Yeah. But if guys showed up at 8, 8.30, 9, it's fine. Just come and hang out. No expectations. You don't need to RSVP. Just come, smoke cigars. And we know that if you get guys together smoking cigars, that good conversation just breaks out. So, and then, you know, we'd have guys, guys would bring a, you know, a bottle of bourbon or we'd have drinks for everyone. And uh, that was really the, I think, the genesis of the group. Yeah. And that was the infectious part was, was obviously having a group of guys to sit more than, you know, 10, 15 minutes to shoot in the breeze to actually have good conversation. But yeah, the Wednesday nights was kind of what we would (laughs) still to this day kind of call the core group. And then we would do like monthly the shout out to Holy Smokes where we would have sometimes 20 plus 30 guys or at least it grew to 
Uh, well, uh, so we got, I think we got, we got the Wednesday rhythm going uh, that first year. And then the next year, we're going into fall. I can't remember if this was 2013 or 2014, but Kay was in town mm-hmm. with uh, a, another friend of ours who's out in the spring, Steve Greason. And Steve's a great guy. Steve's they both amazing. were in town, and it just coincided with this big, kind of a big Wednesday night. We were doing a kind of a fall kickoff. Yeah. We did a fall kickoff. I thought, oh, man, to have one of the founders of Holy Smokes The here. godfather of Holy Smokes, the, I call yeah, him. The godfather to come and so we could kiss his ring and have him <laughs> you know, give us his blessing. Uh, no, we had him come and share the story of Holy Smokes. And that, that night for our kickoff, we, we did a big barbecue. Had people bring food. We cooked meat. Sean is our, he's our meat expert. He's a big barbecue guy. Oh, he started yeah, whipping time. out his photos of... You know all this stuff, and was putting me to shame. And his two green eggs, that yeah, he has in, on his back porch. He's always posting those pictures of the slab of meat that he's cooking. Oh, he was yeah. whipping out these photos, and uh, I was like, okay, I don't do anything like that. But uh, it began, yeah, kind of. I mean, I, that was, I think, maybe my first time meeting Kay. Yeah, I think for a my lot of first introduction, a lot of guys, that was the first time. And so he told the story. We had probably had, I took a picture that night. I think there were about 35 people that came out. Yeah. And we told, we started telling people, hey, invite your friends. And so we had a big dinner, and he told the history of Holy Smokes. He gave, you know, kind of the basic rules of Holy Smokes. <laughs> and then that year, we just, you know, we met probably two to three times a month on Wednesday nights and just kind of built this momentum. And it was fun to watch a bunch of guys kind of, we knew... From different spheres of life, some guys were from work, some guys were from church, uh, and just other other places. And these guys would gather and just start forming friendships with one another. And I think one of the things that's so rich about it is that what a cigar does is it forces you to sit down and slow down, yeah, and relax. And then what grows out of that is just the rich conversation. And sometimes our conversations, we're just talking about life. We're talking about sports. We're talking about how the Pittsburgh Steelers are the best team in the NFL. You know, things like that. (laughs) This Packer fan would disagree, but... (laughs) Well, Packers, they could be number two or three. But, um, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, that kind of stuff. But often it breaks into deeper conversation. A guy will come and he's had a hard week. And he just... You know, after half an hour of smoking a cigar and talking, he began to open up about his week. And there were sometimes guys who are non-Christians would come and talk about faith with us and ask their questions. There'd be times where you'd even... What's that meant for you as a dude who's teaching about apologetics and speaking about discipling future generations? What, what is that like for you to have this event in your backyard and have someone actually ask you questions about those deeper questions? Yeah, I think it provides the rich uh, relational context for those discussions, right? Because sometimes those, you can have the, I, you know, I travel a lot, so I can have that discussion with someone on the plane for an hour and then we land and we go our separate ways and never see him again. And maybe a seed is planted, but in this context, it's a guy who comes week after week after week and we build a, a friendship and there's trust that's built yeah. and so it, it provides this rich relational context in which you can discuss these deeper things and it's just that much more meaningful it's a conversation that carries on you know week after week month after month um, there's an investment in each other's lives you know there's a commitment there and so I think it just deepens and enriches uh, in, enriches I don't think that's a word uh, enriches, <laughs> it's a new word we'll add it yeah, uh, add it to the dictionary it's a Holy Smokes word. <laughs> Holy Smokes enriches my life. <laughs> well, but you do. You have you have the Christian guys where the community is set where, you know, you're not necessarily, you don't even have to share exactly what's going on, but you're seeing or hearing struggles that they're going through and, okay, I'm not alone. And, and, and there's, there's community and counseling being done e- e- even in that where you can grow uh, in your faith. And then it creates a forum where a lot of guys that normally wouldn't come to necessarily, let's say, a Bible study or something like that, and that felt more comfortable whether they knew what they were getting into or not. <laughs> uh, at least we're having good fellowship, and, and to Brett's point, you create kind of that posture where it's easy to enter into those conversations, and, you know, where the most challenging part is investment, right? It's like, okay, I want to reach out to this guy, but it, it takes time. I have to reach out to this guy. Well, here's a weekly gathering that we can easily do, yeah. and most guys are, are willing to come and 
and do that and have good topics, good conversation yeah, about yeah. real stuff. And, 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 and I'm sure that, I mean, because you guys have some regulars that come, if they haven't been in a while, you probably check in and say, hey, yeah, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a month and a half. Yep. Yeah. Everything that, okay? It, that's part of the net, just kind of the natural byproduct of this. Guys will text us. We'll text other guys. Hey, haven't seen you. How's it going? You know, uh, are you going to be there? You know, we're going to do a Holy Smokes this Sunday night. Are you going to make it? And so, yeah, it uh, uh, they just kind of the relationships kind of naturally grow. So you guys have an email list <laughs> of you'd say probably fifty people on your email list that you yeah, let them know about when you're doing events. There's about fifty on the email list. There's forty or fifty who are part of the Holy Smokes face, private Facebook group. Yeah. And there's a little bit of overlap there, but I'd say we probably have a good 80 people on the list. And I just I just have a Word document when a guy shows up. I ask him if, hey, you want to be on the list? And uh, give me your email. Uh, if they're on Facebook, we'll try to connect them to the Holy Smokes Facebook page right there and then. And I just kind of have a Word doc that I just kind of keep track of all the the people that have been in and out of Holy Smokes and shoot out something. And usually it's only a couple of days beforehand and put the word out and guys will gather. One thing that we do is we put no expectations on yeah. people. Like you don't have to RSVP. Uh, you don't have to let us know if you're coming or if you're not coming. Hey, if you come, great. But if you can't make it, there's no pressure. I tell people, hey, even if you're not there, I'm going to smoke a cigar anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just me in my backyard, that's holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. No, but but I think... Having Sean next door probably helps too, though. I oh, mean, I think my... Because you can just walk through the gate right here and just... <laughs> yeah, well, for us, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. But that's a good point to make, that there's no... It's not another thing to your to-do list. It's usually... And that would be another good point to make, too, that for us to host... Our wives obviously value the time that's being spent with these men. It's good quality conversation. We're not at the bar. We're not, you know, doing whatever. She actually now participates and is not, you know, she was jealous about about some of the stuff I'd come home and, and be all amped up about. So the valuing of that time to be able to host a group, I think, is important. Yeah. And so what we found is that guys come because they want to come. There's not pressure. There's not a commitment. They want to be here. And so guys will ask us, if I'm busy traveling and we haven't done one for a month or two, guys are like, hey, when's the next Holy Smokes? When are we doing this? And so The pressure's that, on us. What? The pressure's on us. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm feeling the pressure now. You want me to commit? Um, no. So that, I think, has been a key part of it is that we have no expectations. We don't get irritated with guys if they don't show up. We get guys that will pop in once a year. You know, and when you see him, it's almost like a little reunion. I'm thinking of like yeah. David, who he is one guy in our group, lives nearby, but he's been so busy with life. He's a pastor, but he's doing PhD studies, and he just yeah. checked out for a year, year and a half, and he just showed up about a month ago at our one of our last Holy Smokes, and it was like a reunion. You know, he <laughs> walks in, and it's like David. You know, give him a big hug, and we just picked right up where we left yeah. off. Uh, so I think that's been a key for us is not having expectations, just throwing it out there, not asking guys to commit. But they just naturally want to be here, I think, because of what they experience. In fact, we have had guys from our home church who, for whatever reason, have had difficulty plugging in, uh, getting connected. You know, the small group thing didn't work for them. And this Holy Smokes has almost become their, their, their small group. This is where they kind of do life with you know, with one another mm. and which is huge for us as guys. Yeah. Yeah. Which There's is huge. I mean, think about our culture. I mean, where is, what places are there in the culture for, you know, men to gather and to share two hours or three hours of conversation and to actually talk about significant things, what's going on in your life to share openly. I mean, there's just not a lot of places in the culture that facilitate that kind of thing. And we find that sitting down at a table together with a drink and a cigar, you don't need anything else. That facilitates it right there. True. Very true. So what would you guys say to someone, let's say, in Bozeman, Montana, 
or move. Portland, I would Maine. move out of Montana <laughs> if I were you. <laughs> Portland, Maine, or Madison, Wisconsin, where again I want to see a Holy Smokes group there, so that way when I go back and visit my parents, I can get plugged in and see everyone there in Madtown. What would you say have, have been some of the big keys for you guys getting the, growing this really since 2012, from just you and Sean to 80 guys? and women that show up on a semi-regular basis when you have this this vibrant community here in Orange County. Well, again, you know, Brett did, did some of the initial, but I, I would, I guess I would say that, yeah, you got to be willing, again, as the guy where you appreciate coming together and having good conversation, but it's not necessarily a guy's first response to get connected or, or to do or not necessarily reach out to other guys so you have to kind of be willing to put your put yourself out there and typically like 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 for us uh, again Brett started it but it was more organic in that we were already doing it so then just putting it out there and um, you know guys kind of you know just follow the smoke and came and, and whatever but to say somebody yeah you got to be willing to obviously uh, to put it out there initially, I guess. Yeah, I think if, um, as I kind of think back about how our started, there was kind of an organic part of it where it grew out of some friends smoking cigars. We invite others into it. I, so that's one key is that it's not, it's not a clicky thing. It's not just these two, you know, these three or four or five guys. We just have constantly kept it open open invitation we tell guys hey invite your friends and so that's how people have gotten connected with our group they know somebody who's in the group and uh they've been invited and you know they've they've stuck they've connected and so kind of keeping an open invitation i think for our group and i think it could be different for other groups but we have been the key host we host and that my wife and i um i I think we're both you know, pretty hospitable. We enjoy opening up our home. We see our home as a gift from God. Yeah. Uh, and what this facilitates is is kingdom work. It's yeah. ministry. It's it's highly valuable. And so we're willing to open up the house and just host on a regular basis. We have done. Some other guys have said, "Hey, I'm willing to host." And so we've done nice. it at other guys' house as Beautiful. well. Yeah, Chris is yeah one of our guys. Chris is a regular. He's hosted. We've met at restaurants. There's some restaurants around here. There's the winery in Tustin that has a cigar patio. So we did a you know Christmas party there. We've done gatherings there. That's another good space. So you you know you have a few spaces. Sean oh Sean has you know they've hosted things at their house as well. So I think sharing some of that helps because it can be. I mean there, there's some work that you have to put into it. You know especially as we've grown. We got 20 people in the backyard. Well, we've got to think about seating, you know. Yeah. So we set up some tables, and this is where, you know, I've been blessed with five kids who work for me, and so I'm like, hey, kids, help me set up some tables and chairs, you know. And and there's, you know, there's cleanup afterwards. There's, but that that kind of stuff, I think, is the host. We see as a serving um, others, and so there's, I think that's a, an important part of. of of the mindset is that, um, yeah, I'm going to enjoy the cigars. I'm going to enjoy a good drink and I'm going to enjoy this conversation and the relationship, but I'm also, I'm also serving my brothers and sisters here. So that, that's the hosting, that's the setup, that's the cleanup. And, and the great thing is that guys, the last couple guys who are here always say, Hey, they can we help in. you clean up? And they all pitch yeah. in. Yeah. Right. And so for us, it's been, I think us in the Hatfield, Sean and Christy, my wife and I, being kind of the engine that drives it and so you got to have someone who uh, i think buys into the vision of it sees the need for it is willing to serve and put the effort into it it's not a, i mean not a ton of effort sending out a quick email i just copy and paste all those emails on my word doc throw it in to a uh, sentence email and that's the invitation yeah. and so simple things like that but then yeah you know hosting it takes a little bit of work but i think the if you have the right mindset it, it's not really work. It's just so enjoyable to see, to have a rich evening like this. And, you know, when people go home and I'm cleaning up, I'm not begrudging it. I'm like, that was, that's, that's worth it. 
that is worth it. Yeah. So that's awesome. Holy smokes, Orange County. Hey, everyone, I want to jump in here to talk about the sponsors of this episode. You've heard the old Harry Truman quote, leaders are readers, right? Well, I'm a huge fan of a service that I subscribed to last year called Blinkist. Blinkist provides summaries of many of the top books on the market. Each book summary is divided into short blinks, hence the name Blinkist, and most of those summaries can be read in less than 15 minutes. If you're interested in leadership, check out The 7 Habits of Highly Effective People, or if you want to brush up on your marketing, how about Purple Cow by Seth Godin? We have a seven-day free trial of Blinkist when you go to holysmokes.club slash blink. That's holysmokes.club slash blink, and then get access to the entire library of more than 2,500 summaries. You can read in their beautifully designed app. You can export the book summaries to your Kindle, or you can do what I do, which is listen to the audio while I'm reading the blinks in the app before bed to get that audio plus visual reinforcement of learning. If that sounds interesting to you, you can find that affiliate link embedded in the show notes. Or again, go to holysmokes.club slash blink. By using that link, it's an easy way for you to help support the costs associated with producing this show. I love Blinkist and I'm confident that you in our Holy Smokes audience will love them too. Like I said, the link is in the show notes or go to holysmokes.club slash blink. This episode is also brought to you by our Patreon supporters. For $5 a month or more, you can get access to the Holy Smokes episodes that are ad-free, plus a whole bunch of other great bonuses. Just go to patreon.com slash holysmokes. That's patreon.com slash holysmokes. And finally, this episode is brought to you by our generous donors. We are a nonprofit, and you can make a tax-deductible donation when you go to paypal.me slash holysmokesclub. That's paypal.me slash holysmokesclub. Now, back to the show. If someone is just happening to just tune into the show, how do people get plugged in and get a hold of you and ask for one of those invites or ask to be added to your email list? We've had guys who are, who are on the Holy Smokes Facebook page, which is a private Facebook page, like t- over 2,400 members now. Uh, guys know that there's an Orange County group, and so when they're traveling, if they're in town, they'll just uh, they'll tag me in a post, or, uh, or Kay will connect them with us, or I'll get a, you know, they'll send me a message, say, hey, when are you guys meeting? And, uh, and we'll almost always have a gathering and they can come and hang out with us. Uh, like it, tonight, on a like, Sunday night, not your normal Wednesday night. Exactly. I was right. coming through town, and so you guys were very gracious in hosting us. So We're always could, looking for more excuses to smoke more <laughs> cigars. So Which I am very appreciative of. Yeah. Well, in fact, Travis Bowman, who's on the Holy Smokes, he's an active member of the Holy Smokes group. He lives in Charlotte, Charlotte. North Carolina. He was in town. And uh, oh, that's right. It didn't. It didn't. Fit, he wasn't here like for one of our regular meetings, but we. Uh, oh, the Steelers were on Monday Night Football, that's and right. so I said, "Hey, <laughs> we're gonna sit outside, smoke cigars, and watch the game. Come on over." And he came and joined us. This is just like two weeks ago. Uh, and now you're in town. We we uh, you know threw this uh, this thing together on a Sunday night. Yeah. So if anyone's in town, I think the best way is just through the Holy Smokes Facebook page. Yeah to get in touch with us and say, I'm going to be in Orange County. When are you guys getting together and, and uh, connect? And yeah, I wasn't even on Facebook until, I mean, I got on it for Holy Smokes. And one of the coolest things is, yeah, you just see guys that, hey, I'm in Dubai or, you know, somewhere. And, you know, Holy Smokes, and sure enough, you see guys connecting them. So I think that was one of the coolest things to see guys roll into to our group and you get to hear their story and... And connect with somebody that you never even knew, and and we had a guy from Rwanda, Rwanda, Nate, Nathan, who connected with us through the Holy Smokes group, and was was happened to be in town, like comes into town maybe once every couple of years, yeah, and he came, hung out, we got to hear his uh, story, the amazing work he's doing over in Rwanda, and so yeah, guys uh, connect with us on the Facebook page. All right, so if someone is listening and they happen to be in Southern California and are interested in plugging in, we do have a public page that you can like, Holy Smokes, and uh, go there and we can send us a message. You can, you can send us a message. We will add you to the secret Facebook group. And then through that secret Facebook group, you can connect with Brett and Sean. 
we do need to be clear there is a cost to admission. Just bring two cigars, one for Sean, one for me. <laughs> That's all it requires, and you will have our lifelong loyalty. <laughs> Come bearing gifts. Amen. Sean Hatfield, Brett Kunkel. Thanks for hosting us, and uh, thanks for being on the Holy Smokes Podcast. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Wow.